treatment for hearing loss, okay? Um, hearing aids are not your grandfather's hearing aids anymore, okay? The days of the big, huge brown thing behind the ear <laughs> with the giant ear mold that whistles every time he smiles or chews, that's pretty well gone, okay? Hearing aids today are much more discreet. They're uh, much more stylish. They look more like the small uh, earbuds that people wear, or, and they act like a Bluetooth receiver for your cell phone. They can be connected to your iPad or to your TV. So you can have direct connections between them. So somebody had mentioned earlier that they were having, a, when somebody turns a movie on, they have trouble understanding. One of the things hearing aids can do today is they make connectors that will hook directly to the TV. So no matter what the volume in the room is, let's say a husband's having a hearing problem and a wife is hearing well, or uh, a mother's having a hearing problem and their, their child's watching TV with them. You can turn the volume to the softer setting for that person who has better hearing. The hearing aid can actually be set as a receiver for the phone, the iPad, the TV, and what that does is it makes the, the sound, instead of focusing on the sound coming out of the TV, it focuses on the sound coming out of the hearing aid. It wirelessly goes to it. Hearing aids are also have the options of rechargeable. And the technology keeps getting better and better. Think about hearing aids like a computer, okay? The technology in hearing aids does not move quite as fast as the technology in computers. The reason for that is when Apple or Google or Lenovo sends out a new computer, they don't have to worry about FDA approval. They don't have to worry about certain features and how they affect the health of a person. So they don't have to go through the FDA approval, so it does take a little bit longer. But the technology is ever growing. That's why I say it's not your grandfather's hearing aid. It's not the same thing it was 20 years ago. It's not the same thing it was 10 years ago. Heck, it's not the same thing it was five years ago, okay? Average lifespan for hearing aids, there's different styles. There's in the ear, there's behind the ear, and there's extended wear, okay? So behind the ear is generally your most flexible. Again, even those are smaller and much more sleek looking, so you don't see them. They're actually about a five to seven, four to six year lifespan, depending on which literature you read. Remember, it is a computer. You are putting it on your ear every day. It's exposed to wind, dust, dirt, noise. Hopefully, hours and hours and hours of use, okay? In the ear hearing aids, which again, do have the option of being rechargeable and can also be Bluetooth receivers as well. They are generally about a three to five year window before replacement reason people go with these is either they don't have the space behind their ear or they have the type of hearing loss that's more flat so they don't have to, we don't have to worry about over amplifying the low frequencies or aesthetically they just want something that only goes in the ear ironically when a patient comes in and says i want an in the ear hearing aid i show them a dummy of an in the ear and a behind the ear hearing aid what they generally say is well the behind the ear is bigger in your hand but when I put it on, it vanishes. Yes, because you don't talk to the back of most people's heads. You try to talk to them face to face or even from the side. So behind the ear oftentimes is more aesthetically appealing, even for men with short hair um, or women with short hair for that matter. Hearing aids have come a long way. The other thing they offer is what they call extended wear hearing aids. What an extended wear hearing aid is, is this is truly an invisible option, which is very appealing to most people. The downside is you have to be one, medically cleared, and two, you have to be a candidate. Now, what do I mean by a candidate? There are certain hearing loss parameters that you must fall in to make this work effectively. Yes. Someone will try to sell it to you, even if it's not right for you. But in general, people who are dealing with extended wear hearing aids do a very good job of vetting whether you really are a candidate or not, okay? The downside to extended wear hearing aids generally comes on the cost side. 
So the way that traditional hearing aids work is if you buy a hearing aid, you own it. As long as that hearing aid works, it works for you. That's great. Extended wear, you have to replace them every eight to 10 weeks. You don't pay for new ones every eight to 10 weeks. Hold on. You would come into the office and an audiologist or a hearing aid dispenser would remove it from your ear and put a new one in. You actually pay a subscription fee. So you get to go every, you know, you pay for it once a year, but you get those changed all year throughout the year. The tough part is it's a time commitment, especially for people who travel a lot. It's more of a time commitment than anything else. And then cost. The other thing, believe it or not, extended wear does not have Bluetooth capability, at least not yet. The battery drain would just be so high that you'd have to have it changed every week, which that would defeat the purpose anyway. So the three different types of hearing aids are behind the ear, in the ear, and extended wear. And obviously within behind the ear and in the ear, there are different models and sizes and colors and all that. Um, assistive listening devices. Assistive listening devices have their place and they are wonderful. If you're having trouble just with the TV and you're communicating pretty well elsewhere, Let's say you have a room that's very high ceiling, hard floors, big windows. You get your hearing tested and you find out, hey, I really don't have a hearing loss that I have to manage at this point. Besides having it routinely checked and avoiding any major noise exposure. An assistive listening device like TV ears is wonderful because it brings the sound from the TV directly into the ear. It eliminates all the noise, distance, and reverberation. The downside to assistive li an assistive listening device like a TV uh, ear, ear setup, like a headphone setup, is when your husband or wife or children talks to you, you've got headphones on, so you're not hearing them. Okay? I know some people might think that's good. Yeah, I, I get it. Some people think that's great. Um, and yes, hearing aids come with the spouse mute button as well. We can install it. Um, so there's also alerting devices for people who are truly deaf or extremely hard of hearing. They make alarm clocks that have lights or a bed shaker. I know nobody likes to feel like they're in an earthquake when they wake up, <laughs> but it's very effective if you can't hear an alarm clock, okay? Um, baby cry monitors, all of these things that you would use with normal or good hearing can be modified for people with severe hearing loss. So assistive listening devices have a major role to play in this space. Accessories. Hearing aids generally have the option of having accessories. We already talked a little bit about the TV connector, sending it directly to the hearing aids. Now, the difference between a TV connector and TV ears. TV ears are gonna take the sound exactly as it comes out of the TV and bring the volume up. So if you have a high frequency hearing loss, we're not addressing that. We're making it louder, not clearer. Generally, what the human body does is when we don't understand something, we turn the volume up. I think we all agree with that. I'm sure everyone here has been on a road trip. And as your favorite songs on the radio, invariably, the radio station starts to cut out. So what do you do? You make it louder. You didn't make it any clearer, you just made it louder. Gives your brain more, but not the clarity. Hearing aids, on the other hand, are gonna amplify where you don't hear. The other advantage to a hearing aid with a TV system over, let's say, a headphone setup is if someone comes into the room and starts talking to you, you're going to hear them. Because the microphones on the hearing aid, they are reduced, but they're not shut off. So you still get amplification that gives you a good notification. For safety reasons, that's wonderful. If we're talking about somebody with a mild hearing loss, it's not a huge deal, but if we're talking about somebody with a severe to profound hearing loss, you could walk into the room behind them, they'd have no idea you were there. Um, a few years ago, I had a patient whose daughter was adamant that she get uh, a hearing aid and a TV system instead of wearing her TV ears. Mom fought like crazy. One day the daughter said, listen, she's right down the road, please, here are the keys, go walk in and sit at her kitchen table. She won't even know you're there. I walked in the house, banged the door, walked right in, sat down, 
I was there for 20 minutes. Woman had no idea I ever walked in the house. That's not safe. Okay? If your hearing is that bad, that's just not safe. And then you're putting headphones on on top of it. So not everybody's in that situation. And she was fairly extreme. But this is the difference of, hey, you're wearing headphones, blaring the TV so you hear it, paying attention to it, and you have no awareness of what's going on around you. That's not a good recipe. Obviously, if you live in a gated community, that's much less likely. Or if you live with other people, that's much less likely. This woman happened to live by herself. Needless to say, point was proven. Daughter got what she wanted. Um, other assistive devices are uh, like a partner microphone. What a partner microphone is, is it's a small microphone that can be worn by a spouse or children uh, when you're in a one-on-one -on -one or small group setting. Also, uh, things like the FM systems, which were primarily used for children's classrooms. Those are really important. Uh, those are really important assist, uh, accessories as well. Not so much for um, adults. However, their use is becoming more prevalent in these situations because adults want to be more active. They want to have more flexibility. And they're no longer, it used to be a big box that you had to wear. Now they look like a pen or a little pendant that you can wear around your neck. So they've become a little bit less obtrusive, I guess I'll call them. They look a little better, so people might, don't mind using them quite as much. Um, but they are a really nice way to add to a hearing aid and give you better hearing and understanding in different situations where you want to talk to a specific person.